Hello everyone and welcome to this new and exciting session in which we are going to see how to solve the problem of class imbalance. First of all, before trying to solve this problem, we have to first start by understanding what it is first. So here we have this uh, data set, our uh, train data set made of 1,525 uh, data points for angry, 3,019 for happy, 2,255 for sad. Now, just looking at these numbers, it's clear that any model you want to train on this data set will see more of happy images. And this automatically creates a bias in which the model now will be better or uh, will do better on the happy images as compared to the angry and the sad images. And also, this model will do better on the sad images as compared to the angry images. So we could put them in this order, one, two, three. To confirm this hypothesis, let's take a look at this confusion matrix right here. You'll see that this is um, the actual and this is the predicted. Then here we have correct prediction. So your correct predictions, correct predictions, and your correct predictions. But one thing you will notice is that this is angry, this is happy, and this is sad. We might just draw this here actually. So let's just put this out here. Here we go. And as we we're saying, one thing you will notice is that the number of cases where the input image is actually happy and the model predicts angry or sad that is 19 and year 59 is going to be fewer than the number of cases where the model is or where the model is supposed to predict angry but it instead predicts happy and sad so here you have 58 and 78 and when you add this two up what you get 136 and so this means that the model tends to make more errors when shown angry images as compared to when shown happy images we could also look at the example of the sad images here for the sad what we have here is 47 and 81 47 81 if we add this two up we have a hundred and twenty eight mistakes and so on this section we'll use a technique known as class weighting to try to reduce the effect of this bias which has been created because of an uneven distribution in the number of samples per class in our data set don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you never miss amazing content like this before we go on to explain how class weighting can be used to solve this problem of the class imbalance what we we'll want to make uh, you understand is the very first thing you want to do is to build a balanced data set so if you have three classes for example angry happy and sad then you should gather as much cleaned data as possible from these three classes and also ensure that these classes are balanced so for example if we want to create some much more sophisticated system we could gather so a hundred thousand of this a uh, hundred thousand we gather your hundred thousand and your a hundred thousand so you should uh, initially strive to have this balance Nonetheless, in some cases or in some certain problems, uh, getting this kind of balance would be very difficult. And so we'll just have to resort to uh, a, a technique or one of the techniques that is class weighting. In order to understand class weighting, recall that you have the output level and then you have what the model outputs. Let's call this Y chapeau. So the model outputs this and this is what it's supposed to output now to be able to update the weights here what we do is we compute this difference or this loss 
here between these two um, outputs that's between the expected output and what the model outputs and we are trying to or the aim here is to minimize this difference between this expected and actually predicted output now since we know that the model has a tendency of favoring the images or the happy images what we'll do is we are going to penalize the model more when it predicts a wrong output for an angry image and so we'll penalize more so here we're going to penalize this one the errors from here more than the errors from here and by doing so the model's weights will try to be uh, will be readjusted such that it doesn't favor another or favor any one of the classes now that said we are going to include the class weight here in this fit method so we'll just have this class weight and then we'll have a class weights dictionary so we're going to define this class weights dictionary before uh, this one here we have three classes so we have class 0 and we'll have its weight uh, next we would have class 1 and we would have its weights next we would have class 2 and we would have its weights so here we have the angry the happy and the sad class now to obtain these weights we can use a formula 1 divided by the number of samples and since here we have this number of samples for angry to be 1525, happy 3019, sad 2255. Then when we calculate this weight here, we would have 1 divided by this. You will see that if we take 1 here, the weight will now be 1 divided by this number of samples, uh, 0. There we go. And then here we have 1 divided by number of samples for class 1 and 1 divided by number of samples for class 2 now once we have this we could also normalize this value so that there is no so much great difference or the values are in similar order of magnitude so let's add this code cell and then print out the class weights we run this and we print out our class weights there we go we have this error number of samples zero let's run this here and run this okay so we have this we have our, our class weights you see this one this and this okay now we're going to multiply each and every value by the sum of the, or the total number of uh, data points we have so yeah we're going to multiply this by six thousand 769 799 6799 and year 6799 there we go year 6799 we have that we run this get this class weights that's it 4.45 2.25 3.01 so we see that here we have this um class that's the angry class has more weights compared to the happy and the sad and this will now influence the model when uh, updating its parameters since the loss will now punish the model more for making mistakes with inputs from this uh, sample as compared to inputs from this sample or this other sample so that's it we have our class weights we can now go ahead and add this to our, our training so we have this we've added this already even so we just need to have this and then run this again now we'll start this pre-trained we'll, we'll restart this so we'll just from here we have our pre-trained model we'll recompile this there we go and then we'll start training for over 60 epochs so here we have trained and here's the results we get we go ahead and evaluate the model we have 84 percent accuracy uh we test here 
we have this uh, different images which we pass we we actually make here just one error so that's it we now get to the confusion metrics which we have plotted and one thing we can notice straight away is the fact that the errors made by the model per class is more evenly distributed so you could see here this I have this here you could see here that the model makes around 118 errors for the angry images while for the happy makes about a hundred and or rather 97 errors and then for this it makes 148 errors so although we have we still have this difference which is inevitable now this uh, margin has been reduced and that's it for the section the solving the problem of class imbalance we have other techniques to remedy or solve this problem like oversampling and undersampling in oversampling what we have is uh, we suppose now we have this uh, initial data set so let's just angry happy and sad and so what we are gonna do here is we are gonna randomly pick some elements from this um, angry, angry sample right here and add it up to the um, available data we already have here and so this uh, makes up for this remaining gap we have here and now matches up with the number of happy samples and then for the sad samples we again randomly pick some samples from here and add it up to this data set so that we now have this um, data set which has uh, which matches up with the number of samples for the happy now whereas with downsampling what we are instead going to do is we are going to cut this off here so we'll cut this off and we'll cut this uh, part off so now what we're going to have is this um, here so we're going to take off some parts of our data set so now all this match up instead with this angry uh, class of our data set so now here we have that we have the happy see it matches up and then we have the sad so that's uh down sampling and since this part which is taken off is taken off randomly we call this random down sampling nonetheless it's not advisable to use over sampling or under sampling when solving real world problems as either you're adding already existing data like this which is not necessarily a great idea or you're even removing data from your data set which is not also a great idea so if you have a problem of class imbalance the very first thing should which comes to your mind or which should come to your mind should be that of trying to balance this data by gathering much more data from a particular class